All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Friday Ramblings. I am your perpetual host, the Bardic One. We are here to discuss everything that is awesome in pop culture entertainment, one Friday at a time. The Disney Afternoon Block is still in motion. We got a couple more shows to induct with high honors. And this is the big one, folks. This is the one I know you've all been waiting for. This is in many ways the main event, although as I said, we do have one more coming at you in January. Because of my personal preference, you know, I think it's a great little epilogue finale. But partly because you can't talk about it before you talk about this one. This is in many ways the show that everybody thinks of when you think of the Disney afternoon. The show that defined that late 80s, early 90s Disney programming. And that is DuckTales. Yep, from that opening theme that was just energetic and peppy. You know, life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Race cut. Got a little getting tum tumble dunged here. Airplanes, it's a duck world. I'm not going to sing the whole thing, most because of copyright catching, but that's the jam. Theme song catches you by being upbeat. You see flashes of them going on crazy adventures. Everybody's having a good time, supporting each other, and being a family. It's everything you want in a TV show. So what is DuckTales? Well, before we discuss DuckTales, we got to discuss the old, 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 old Disney comic books. The kind of stuff they were putting out before most of us were born. The kind of stuff that our parents, like my generation of parents, read when they were kids, if they were reading the comic books as kids. For my younger viewers, the stuff is probably your grandparents read. And that is the old school Disney comics, specifically the Scrooge McDuck comic. Because Scrooge McDuck is the central character of the DuckTales show. Scrooge McDuck is the richest duck in the world. A gentleman of Scottish descent who made his first fortune in the Klondike gold rushes and continued to build and build upon it in American capitalist awesomeness. He also, when first introduced, was a bit of a jerk. Taking notes from Ebenezer Scrooge of classic Charles Dickens fame, Scrooge McDuck is, or at least was, portrayed in those early comics as being a big old jerk who didn't care about anything but his money. Still, he had a nephew, more famously known as Donald Duck, who himself had nephews named Huey, Dewey, and Louie that Donald was in charge of raising. So, Donald would come around to visit his uncle. He'd bring Huey, Dewey, and Louie with him, and everybody would hang with Uncle Scrooge and get dragged into misadventures because, well, that happened with Donald, Huey, Dewey, and Louie in their own comic book. But when they would show up, they would, Scrooge would have misadventures of his own, whether it be from looking for new treasures to add to his fortune or just plain his love of things historical and archaeology or going up against rivals who, who sought to take away either his fortune directly or the alleged incredible good luck he had that helped him build his fortune, depending on the particular antagonist. So, a few decades later, as Disney's ramping up their idea for this Disney afternoon programming block, somebody gets the broad idea to convert these comics, some of which are still considered to this day by many people in the comics industry to be some of the best written and drawn comics ever made. We will certainly discuss them another day because there's a few different 
men we got to call out and I got to do my research and make sure I give them all the proper credit they deserve. And we are focusing on the cartoon show today. But yes, the cartoon show, which they named Duck Tales, as in stories or tales of a duck, which is a pun because ducks themselves have little tails. Tee hee, tee hee. It basically picks up where the general comic books did when Scrooge McDuck became a regular appearing character in his own book. Which is that Donald has decided to join the Navy and as such passes custody of the triplets to Uncle Scrooge. And in the cartoon series, he decides that while he's not 100% thrilled with the idea of now having to raise children, hey, they are family and all other personality flaws of his aside, he does care for his family. Family is important to him. Especially when he actually interacts with them and finds out he might actually like them as people. Rounding out the cast of the cartoon was Housekeeper, Mrs. Beakley, and her own granddaughter, Webigail, or Webby for short, along with Scrooge's personal pilot, Launchpad McQuack, a research scientist named Gyro Gearloose, who would occasionally invent fantastic inventions that would help Scrooge and nephews on their adventures, the dog-based butler Duckworth, as well as the rivals, Flintheart Glumgold, the second richest duck in the world, the crime family, the Beagle Boys, and Magica Dispel, who sought Scrooge's number one dime, as in literally the first money he ever made after making his way to America, because it allegedly is the source of Scrooge's great luck in money-making, and as such would be a powerful token for her own magic spells. Now, ultimately, um, the characters were tweaked slightly from their old comic book appearances. Flintheart was made to be Scottish to play off Scrooge McDuck's own heritage. Uh, Magica Dispel went from a specifically Italian character to a vaguely Eastern European. But, by and large, these were all good things. Now, in later seasons, we would also be introduced to uh, Scrooge's old girlfriend from the Klondike's Day, Glittering Goldie who may be the only person that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Scrooge in one-line wit and stubbornness, especially when it comes to making a dollar. The cave duck Bubba Duck, who was recruited after some time-traveling shenanigans in a multi-part story arc, and Fenton Crackshell, Scrooge's personal accountant who's nerdy, bumbling nature is set aside when he dons a super suit and becomes the RoboCop-inspired Gizmo Duck, adding a bit of superhero-ness to the show. Still, it is all great things, and they made reference to a lot of classic literature, uh, such as Sherlock Holmes, Greek mythology, Shakespeare, as well as historical things like Jack the Ripper and various uh, ancient civilizations that were given a anthropomorphic duck style makeover. What's this all mean though? Well, it means any given episode of DuckTales you are guaranteed to have misadventures, humor, Good morals about 
loving your family and always putting them first, including in the case of people like Webby and Mrs. Beakley, the family you weren't necessarily born with, but the family you make. As well as always supporting your friends, such as Launchpad McQuack, who goes down in infamy as the pilot who's never actually successfully landed a plane. His trademark phrase being in any crash you can walk away from. Yep, Launchpad crashes every time he flies. Because he's Launchpad. Still, his dashing good looks are a an old school aviator outfit or a wonderful throwback to the golden age of aviation. As well as the heroes of the oldest genre of movies where they all had those perfect chins and that bearing and barrel chest. Fortunately, he doesn't necessarily have their arrogance and obsession with winning women over either. Launchpad's just a good-natured goof. As I said, this is perhaps Disney's most successful show of the classic Disney afternoon era. Yes, it currently has a reboot show, although we're not going to get much into that because I haven't watched a bunch of it, and if I ever do get around to reviewing it, it definitely deserves its own episode, mostly because they have used the show to also introduce uh, reboot era characters from other Disney afternoon shows, such as the Rescue Rangers, and it, thus it is its own big old cup of tea. Now, it should be noted at the height of DuckTales' popularity, it also spawned a theatrical film, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. This would be a rarity for Disney afternoon shows. Really about the only one you could kind of group in with that would be the later era Aladdin show which you can really only give half credit because, yes, the third movie basically served as a series finale for the show. Um, but at the same time, the show itself was a spinoff of a pre-existing theatrical movie, so it's, as I said, it only gets half no credit. But still, DuckTales Treasure of the Lost Lamp was a theatrical movie that Interestingly, was not done by their main movie division, like their iconic um, core movies, but was produced, uh, that branch being known as Walt Disney Feature Animation, got my notes straight here, was actually produced by the Walt Disney Television Animation crew under the banner of Disney Movie Tunes. This means that it was produced by in-house by the same rough wing of Disney that was doing the show itself. Which was good because it lent to some proper continuity. And it should be admitted the film did underperform at the box office, earning only $18 million on a $20 million budget. Which is why there were never subsequent sequels. Although it did receive a lot of positive reviews from critics and has become something of a cult classic. Especially among the DuckTale fan community. Otherwise, I mean, what else can you say about the show? It's DuckTales. It's adventures that are timeless, that harken back to, as I said, the kind of Stories that your grandparents would have seen in their movies or read in their comic books as children. You know, the, the old-fashioned, what they call the serials. Where you wander around the world and ancient ruins and local tribes. You had rivals. You had dashing, daring-do heroes. But it was... 
But at the core of it all, you had Scrooge McDuck, who may be one of the strongest written Disney characters of all time. In that Donald is an incredibly interesting character, but his short-tempered and somewhat hard to understand all the time voice, you know, <laughs> there we go, kind of hard to do, you know, get that ducky rasp voice, it, voice to it, means that it's kind of hard for him to carry a major show like this. And he's can be occasionally be a bit of a two-dimensional character. Oh, also I do want to mention that uh, despite the fact that the show did open with Donald uh, leaving the nephews behind to go pursue a naval career, Donald himself did appear as a recurring character in the show as the, their adventures around the world would sometimes coincide with where Donald and the aircraft carrier he was serving on was currently stationed which meant Donald was able to join in on the adventures. As I said, Scrooge McDuck is your central character and the anchor of the show. Scrooge is a classic businessman, in many ways a satire of the old school monopolistic self-made men like J.P. Morgan and the Carnegie's and the Rockefeller's Men that worked their tails off, you know, basically working from the time they woke up until the time they passed out late at night, doing everything they could to stay ahead of the competition. Scrooge, one of Scrooge's iconic phrases is, I am smarter than the smarties and tougher than the toughies, even at his advanced age, being willing to roll the sleeves up and get in a brawl to stand up for his honor and the honor of his extended family. This is all wonderful things. Scrooge McDuck, though, as we have said, is also known for even late into the show when he would soften up a bit as far as being short with people and only being focused on making his money still was notoriously cheap refusing to pay the nephew's allowance any more than he could penny pinch out of them to the point that they would actually make more money running their own businesses than trying to get paid fair wages from Scrooge. It should be said that the balance of that was it did lend to a lot of humor. Uh, one of my most iconic moments in the show for me personally was a gag that exemplifies this where Scrooge um, finding himself suffering from a mysterious uh, illness went to the downtown free clinic to get examined. The doctor's first response upon seeing the patient's name is to disbelieve this is the actual Scrooge McDuck and accuse him of being a crazy homeless man. When Scrooge continued to deny this, the doctor pointed out, why would it make sense for the richest duck in the world, duck who's got all the money, come down to a free clinic. And Scrooge's response, how do you think I stay the richest duck in the world? I don't spend money I don't have to. Even his own health. Now granted it wasn't necessarily a, a terminal disease, but still sick enough to take time away from work to go to a doctor and he still seeks out a free doctor just to save some money that he can well afford to pay. Because that's Scrooge McDuck. And it's perfect com comedic logic. You can't be Scrooge McDuck. He's the richest duck in the world. Why would he come down here to the free clinic and, instead of having a personal doctor? You know how much those things cost? I'm never going to stay the richest duck in the world if I have a personal doctor. That's why I come to the free clinic. Comedic brilliance. 
let's wrap things up with just how popular DuckTales was. And that is at its peak, it had everything merchandise. You had plushies, you had action figures, you had clothing lines, and yes, folks, you had video games. Perhaps the most iconic piece of DuckTales merchandise for people of my generation was the two NES games, especially the first one. Produced by Capcom, these games were some of the most beloved licensed NES games released and continue to have a strong legacy as must-play classic platformers due to being released as part of the Disney Afternoon Collection, which is available on Steam and most, con most consoles, as well as Way Forward, an excellent company that we have spoken well of in the past, releasing a full-blown remaster of the first game with the appropriate title of DuckTales Remastered, which I highly recommend if you can still find it available for digital purchase. As it is everything that was brilliant about the first game and more so in all the right ways. In that, unlike some remasters, it's not a simple matter of, hey, we're doing a bunch of side modes and unnecessary optional characters you can play as. No, it's still all Scrooge McDuck in his glory, but you have better graphics, you have an excellent map to work your way around the levels and finding all the items and treasure you need to find in the levels. A new tutorial level, a new end game level with an extra boss. And big finale, most importantly, you have full voice acting, which they were not able to do in the NES original. In fact, WayForward actually hired as many of the original voice actors from the DuckTales show as they could. Sadly, a couple of them had passed on, so they got the best sound-alikes there were, so that for fans who had seen the classic show, the voice actors would sound like the characters. And to 100% prove this was a labor of love, and why I highly recommend DuckTales Remastered. When I say they improved the graphics, yes, I mean it didn't look like the classic 8-bit digitized pixels. But it's not super crazy 3D HD either. They tweaked the graphics so it looks like the classic cartoon itself. The perfect level of graphical and audio improvement. Characters sound like they did on the cartoon show. The sound effects sound like they did on the show. The levels look like they did on the show. That is what a remaster should be. You look at what the original game was trying to do and wanted to do, and you say, okay, we can hit that goal closer than you could because of the advancements in technology and the little bit bigger budget we're working with. Because your game built in an audience so we can get people to pluck down more money as they know somebody's going to buy this remake or remaster. So with that closing, go out. DuckTales is available on Disney+. Plus. There's a couple missing episodes and some episodes if you watch in the order Disney+. Plus Marathons I'm in are technically out of order. But it is pretty definitive. The show itself, let's see, on your home video release you had um, four DVD compilation sets that cover the, let's see, Yes, that cover all 100 episodes of the original series. So, there you are, folks. Also, for international viewers, uh, DuckTales may still be available, on, at least in part, on Netflix. Not in America, because it's on Disney+. Plus. Still, it is there. 
I highly recommend it. If you ever want to understand what late 80s, early 90s cartoons were all about, DuckTales is what's going to make you go, this is why 30 years later people are still in love with these shows. This is why people still love this video game. Yes, play DuckTales Remastered or get the Disney Afternoon Collection. You can play the two, the two games as they were originally made, as well as the two Rescue Rangers games, because we previously talked about the Rescue Rangers TV show, the Tailspin game, which we had previously talked about, and the game based off the show we're going to talk about next month, and that is Darkwing Duck. Yeah! Oh, hashtag spoilers. The Daring Duck of Mystery is coming. And we're going to talk about him and his connections to DuckTales next month. So stay tuned. If you want to make sure you don't miss that episode, you better click that notification bell. You better click that subscribe button. If you've already done that, thank you very much. Make sure to watch that episode. And, of course, if you're watching all this after it airs live, and for the first time, you could even jump right to that episode now. If you're watching this after that, after Darkwing Duck comes out, watch them together. But until then, we have a few other excellent episodes of The Ramblings, because there's a few more Fridays between here and Darkwing Duck. We're going to cover some other topics. Polish up some other long-running themes here. And, more importantly, in a couple of weeks, we're going to say goodbye to 2022. And we're going to do it with a positive note. Because if there's anything we have here at Roulette Productions, that is a guarantee. It's that we may be occasionally critical, but it will be constructive because we are not here to hate. We are here to celebrate entertainment. Because it's entertaining. Even if not to you, it is to somebody, and we respect that. Until then, thank you for watching. I love all my fans, and I'll see you in seven.